Hi friends, it's me, Tyke the Retro Duck, and I want to talk about how recently I finished my Wii U collection and now have a complete North American collection for the Nintendo Wii U. I own three Wii U's, I apparently own two copies of Sing Party, one was for this microphone, and then of course I have all of the games. You can see them stacked here, and we're just going to go through them. This is what exists in the complete North American Wii U collection. You got Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Mass Effect 3 Special Edition, which uh, this came with a comic, a digital comic you got through the eShop, in which you would answer questions to fill out the story elements you needed for Mass Effect 1 and 2, because obviously Mass Effect 1 and 2 were not released on the Wii U. Nintendo Land, which came as a pack entitled with a lot of the Wii U's. New Super Mario Bros. U. Sing Party. You're going to see that twice. Sing Party. All right, moving on. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. I own like six copies of this game. It's really fun. A good um, competitor to Mario Kart. Good thing of the word. Just Dance 4. Transformers Prime. ESPN Sports Connection. Your Shape Fitness Evolved, which surprisingly this game does not utilize the Wii Fit Balance board. I thought it did. It only uses the gamepad and the Wii modes. This game that was really rare for a while. Hello Kitty Cruisers, which now is no longer rare because it was re-released on the Switch. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, also re-released on the Switch. Cabela Dangerous Hunt, 2013. This is the cheaper of the two Cabela's games. Then we have the Atrocious Fast and the Furious Showdown game. Of course, one of my favorites, Minecraft on the Wii U. We then have Minecraft Story Mode, the complete adventure. Uh, this is my GameStop copy of LEGO Dimensions. Have another one of those as well. This is Brunswick Pro Bowling. This is a bowling game. Not really much to be said. Pikmin 3, also re-released on the Switch. And then of course Resident Evil Revelations. Penguins of Madagascar, a really great show. I watched it a lot when I was actually in high school and just put on Nickelodeon in the background doing my homework. Cars 3, Driven to Win, one of the sealed games that I have on the Wii U because really fun when you tell people that you like do you have a sealed copy of Cars 3 on the Wii U? Because I sure do. But do you? No. And you know why you don't? Because you're just not as cool as me. Skylanders Imaginators. Call of Duty Ghosts. Another copy of Skylanders Imaginators. Uh, Darksiders War Master Edition, which actually didn't come to the Wii U before the second game did. This is a remaster, hence the War Master Edition. One of the best games on the Wii U of all time, and now is on its third game on the Switch. Splatoon, which still has an active scene right now, um, at least until they shut down the Wii U servers, but then obviously they're going to make it so that you can play Splatoon uh, like they do with the Wii, where you can go and play Mario Kart after hours, or, well, through like an online connection. Terraria, which unfortunately does not include the final update, so we're lacking some stuff there. Star Fox Zero, which also comes bundled with Star Fox Guard, but this is my like individual copy. I have a box copy as well. Monster High, 13 Wishes, one of the two Monster High games released on the Wii U. Uh, Wipeout, Create and Crash, one of the two Wipeout games released on the Wii U. Ben 10 Omniverse 2, one of the two Omniverse games released on the Wii U. And then of course, everyone's favorite new Zelda game, which has a sequel coming out in 2023, Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and this is actually the uh, misprint edition. So all of these controllers that are listed here don't actually work with the with the game, except for the gamepad. Just the way the game is set up, initially they would have worked had they not ported it over to the Switch, but they figured it was better as a launch title for the Switch than a title for the Wii U that was dying anyway. Of course, next up we have more Zelda. We have Twilight Princess HD, which is a great way to play Twilight Princess. If you don't have it on the GameCube, it's way easier to play than on the Wii. My favorite Zelda games of all time, Wind Waker HD, which makes the game a lot more playable than the GameCube version, and is just overall a blast. Also on the eShop, you can get games like Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, um, and then you can get like obviously on the 3DS eShop, you could get all like G the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy like Advance titles, not Game Boy Advance titles, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy titles. So there was a lot of versatility in playing the Legend of Zelda games. The Wii U you could play a bunch on. 
Path and Toad Treasure Tracker, which actually came from a mini game in Super Mario 3D World, and people loved it, so it got its own game. My least favorite game on the Wii U as of right now, this game sucks. I can rant about this game for hours on end. I hate it. It is terrible. I don't want to say more about it. Uh, so Kiyomura Sessions FE, also re-released on the Switch, is one of those JRPG slice of life games. Splinter Cell Blacklist, another Tom Clancy game. Surprising, right? We have a Marvel Avengers Battle for Earth, a Marvel fighting game on the Wii U, which allows you to play as about, I think, 13 different Marvel characters. I don't remember exactly who, but it's just like a side 2D fighting game. Batman Arkham, oh, this is Arkham City Armored Edition. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Mighty Number no. 9. Everyone thought this would be as awesome as Mega Man, and it was not. It was a failure, but it's also one of the Wii U games to come with a bunch of stuff on the inside, because the Wii U was at the beginning of the era where they started to stop giving manuals to people. Uh, Rapala Bass Fishing. Because, you know, you gotta fish. Need for Speed Most Wanted You, also known as Need for Speed Most Wanted in a lot of other places. This is Ness Remix Pack, so this was actually released digitally on the eShop as Ness Remix Pack 1 and Ness, um, Ness Remix Pack 2, and then this physical release just combines both of them, which allows you to play a bunch of old Nintendo Under Damage System games. One of the two Angry Birds for the Wii U, Angry Birds Star Wars, you know, because you gotta have Angry Birds themed Star Wars games. This is Bayonetta 2, but this Bayonetta 2 is special because it includes the original Bayonetta. So there's two releases of Bayonetta on the Wii U. There is this one, which comes with Bayonetta 1, and then there's one that's just a standalone Bayonetta 2. And so the only difference is when you come with Bayonetta 1, you have, obviously, the additional disc. So you have Bayonetta, and then you have Bayonetta 2. Because they're like, oh, we'll bundle it together. Technically, Bayonetta does not count as a Wii U release, even though it's technically on the Wii U. It's just because it doesn't have a physical case, so it's not counted, but I counted it toward it because it's an actual, like, it's a game you can play and it has the branding. There's not really much difference with it, but that's one of those tripulations when it comes to, like, what the collect what the collecting community for the Wii U wants, and that's one of those weird things. It's also, like, with New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super, like, Luigi U, and then the combo pack. Like, is that a separate game? Because there's, the games are released separately and then they were released together. We got the greatest game of all time, The Smurfs 2, based on the best Smurf movie of all time, The Smurfs 2. We got Skylanders, I believe this is this trap theme. I can't play any of the Skylanders games, I do not have any of the Skylander figurines. Yoshi's Woolly World, because you gotta have a Yoshi game on a Nintendo console. A good old indie game, Shovel Knight, which is really heavy because it also has a manual. It has a very thick manual, actually. We got this game, which was released on the PS2 back in the day, Legend of K. This is Anne of the Anniversary Edition, and it's just a remaster of the PlayStation 2 game, Legend of K. Um, yeah. We got Skylander Superchargers, Swap Force, Kung Fu Panda, Showdown of Legendary Legends, uh, according to something that I read, not all characters are unlocked automatically in this, and some you had to get through DLC in the eShop. Nintendo Wii U eShop closing in like a month. That's going to suck, because then you can't get all the characters in this game, which makes the game incomplete. Then we got Sniper Elite ver version 2, or V2. One of the best titles on the Wii U, in my opinion. One of my favorite games. It uses the gamepad so effectively. This is Zombie U. It was one of the reasons initially I wanted to buy a Wii U, back in 2012, but I never did because I'm like, why would I buy it for one singular game? And now that I've actually played it, this is a really good zombie survival horror game. You can also get it on other things like Steam, but it just does not play the same as the Wii U version. It's set up to use the gamepad. Even on the back, it says you can use the gamepad in over 15 different ways. A lot of the games don't use the gamepad that effectively. They just show the same thing you're seeing on the TV screen, which is great if you like want to watch TV and like have family that want to watch TV. While you play video games, but not great when you want to play a game like this where you like use the gamepad effectively. Got another wipeout game, wipeout number three. Game Party Champions. The only FIFA game released on the Wii U, FIFA Soccer 13, which 
Movie of Dreamwood's board games, they did not get released on the Wii U. A lot of third parties stopped publishing on the Wii U after 2013, so they just did not see any success with the Wii U and no longer wanted to, like, maintain it. Assassin's Creed 3. And then, of course, the original Ben 10 Omniverse. These are also in no particular order, they're just in whatever order I have them in in a stack. They were in alphabetic order at some point, and then I made a TikTok video showing off my Wii U collection, and that kind of, like, they ended up in a stack in my room. We got Darksiders 2. Yay. Oh, and on the on the, the purple lines is it includes bonus content. We got Black Ops 2, which the last time I tried to use this, it keeps telling me that my disc isn't clean, and I'm like, I cleaned my disc multiple times. One of my favorite games of all time, Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two, though I still like the first one better. This is a good time. This is probably the worst version of Epic Mickey 2, though. Uh, I'd rather play it on the PC or I'd rather play it on something else. Tank Tank Tank, one of my favorite Wii U games, because it's just a really fun time. I put like an hour into it and I could not get past the first, um, I couldn't get past the first mission, but even then I still had like a blast playing it because it's just one of those games where you can just sit down and just shoot. There's also a King Kong mode where you can like play with your friends and just have a good time. We got Ninja Gaiden 3, Warrior's Edge, because you need to have a Ninja Gaiden game on a Nintendo console. Sorry, I said Warrior's Edge, this is Racer's Edge, not Warrior's Edge. More sports, NBA, 2K 2013, and Madden NFL 13. We got Scribble Mods Unlimited. We got the Rabbids game, Rabbids Land, which is like a Mario Party clone. We got Tekken Tag Tournament, Wii U Edition, Tekken game. We got Warrior Oro we got Warriors Orochi Hyper 3. I always say Warriors 3 Orochi Hyper, which I know is not correct. We got Skylanders Giants, which I just picked up because this was the one game I was missing a case for out of the entire collection. And then underneath it is my copy of Skylanders Giants that did not have a case. And then I have Scribble Knots Unmasked. And then DuckTales Remastered. There's two versions of DuckTales on the Wii U. One comes with a pin, one does not. I do not have the one with the pin. The pin one is a lot, lot rarer than this version. This version is pretty obtainable. I also got it because that was also when DuckTales was no longer available digitally for a long time. It's available digitally now, as far as I know, unless they take it away again. But I did end up getting it digitally on Steam. And I ended up putting it on there. So, two of the rarer Wii U games. This was the last game released on the Wii U. It was Shakedown, or it is Shakedown Hawaii. My copy, as you can see, is sealed. I haven't opened it. I haven't wanted to open it. This is my copy, though, of Axiom Verge, also sealed. Um, and in the little plastic sleeve that the store I bought from gave it to me because they were selling it for a dude. And I wanted to support the store at that point because they recently got robbed after going to a convention and someone just stole all of their stuff. And it was really sad. They're good now. That was about two years ago. So... We got the only Spongebob game on the Wii U, Spongebob Plankton's Robotic Revenge. We got the other Barbie game, which I've never played, Barbie and Her Sister's Puppy Rescue. I hope this is better than Dreamhouse Party, because I hated Dreamhouse Party, because three minutes for a minigame is far too long. The Peanuts movie game, Snoopy's Grand Adventure. The OG Angry Birds, Angry Birds Trilogy. The SteamWorld games, SteamWorld Heist and SteamWorld Dig, the combo pack. You can also get them um, separately, not on disc, but through the eShop. The most expensive game on the Wii U, and a game that I'm planning to play very soon, sometime this year, Devil's Third, which is a Nintendo-published first per third-person shooter game, and it's just so bizarre, and it was so under- it was, like, so unsold. There was a person who I, like, posted a TikTok, and in the TikTok posted about how, yeah, they didn't get their copy of Devil's Third, because they pre-ordered it, but then they're like, oh, we don't have enough copies, because they didn't make enough copies. Because they were like, oh, no one's going to buy this, because it's on the Wii U, and it came out in, like, 2015, and not everyone wanted to buy Wii U games in 2015. Though everyone, a lot of people would go out and buy Splatoon, which was fun, but Splatoon still did not save the Wii U as a console, but it did at least birth Splatoon, and now we're on Splatoon 3, which isn't really any different. And now you can play the Splatoon, now with, like, the most recent Nintendo Direct, you can play the Splatoon 1 map in Splatoon 3, which is actually pretty cool. We got 007 Legends, which is a bunch of the James Bond games. It takes the best levels out of all of them, and you can go play them. 
the rarer of the two uh, Mario and Sonic games on the Wii U, Mario and Sonic Rio 2016 Olympic Games, because this one just got limited release because it was released in 2016, and then there wasn't an Olympic game after it, there wasn't one in 2018, and the next one was 2020 for the Tokyo Olympics, I believe. Then you got Sochi 2014, which is a lot easier to find. One of the worst Mario Party games to ever exist, Mario Party 10. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, a tennis game on the Wii U that some people love, some people hate. It's tennis. It's Mario Tennis. I think Aces is the better game, but that's my own opinion. We got one of my other sealed games on the Wii U, Runbo Deluxe Edition. This is a fun platformer that I have not played, as you can tell, because it is happily sealed and I do plan to open it eventually. My third copy of Skylanders Imaginators, but this one is unfortunately not in its own case, in its original case. Hyrule Warriors, a really good time, which this was released as the definitive edition on the Switch. And then of course, the Age of Calamity was the sequel to it, and that's also on the Switch. So, but this is where it was birthed, and this is where I'd want to play it. You got Injustice Gods Among Us, because you can't have a Marvel fighting game without having a DC fighting game to go along with it. The Ultimate Spider-Man, this is the Ultimate Edition, or sorry, this is the Amazing Spider-Man Ultimate Edition, not the Ultimate Spider-Man. That's a completely separate, separate thing for Spider-Man. And this, and this is the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, both of these take place based on the movies The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, because the Wii U was like the most prevalent console when they came out and they wanted to do them. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 1 is a bit of a better game than The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but they both play fine, but they're not as good as the new Marvel Spider-Man game through Insomniac. Xenoblade Chronicles Cross. I do also have a collector's edition box for this. In my collector's edition box, I don't keep this case. I have a Japanese version of Xenoblade, and I figured I would just put it in there so it's like there is a game in there, um, but it sits on my shelf in my living room as just something cool as the collection piece because someone sold one of my local game shops the case and everything in the collector's edition case, but didn't give him the game. So he gave me a pretty fair deal on buying the box. Next up, we have the Wonderful 101, which is the game that allows you to control 101 heroes at the same time, utilizing the Wii U gamepad to manage where you get to send them to, and it's a really fun time, and it was re-released on the Switch not too long ago, but a lot of people didn't like the remaster because this was really made for the gamepad. It was one of those games that was made for the gamepad. This is the Wii U and Me, which is a series I'm supposed to be working on where I review all of these games, and there's some reviews on the back from some fun people that I just have in my own collection, but this is not an actual Wii U game, and everyone's like, is this a Wii U game? No. It's a review series. <laughs> Got Wii Fit U. The balance board is actually under my bed and has been for a while. Uh, I have tested it. This game does work, and the balance board is fun. The balance board cost me $30 extra, because uh, I wanted to be able to play it. We got Tumblestone, which is kind of, I thought it was like a Bejeweled clone, and it kind of is like a Bejeweled clone, but there's also more to it. The other Transformers game, Rise of the Dark Spark. The Voice, I Want You, because we need to have more singing video games than Sing Party. This game that reminds me of Shaun the Sheep, Funky Barn, because he kind of looks like Shaun the Sheep. It's a party game in which you just like run around a farm and you do different farm things. Oh, sorry, it's not a party game, because it's one player checking on the back again. But <laughs> that's what I always thought it was, because, you know, you get to go run around the Funky Barn, and you get to do a bunch of different mini games at the Funky Barn. This is what I was talking about before. This is the combination Star Fox Zero, and then it says Sun comes with Star Fox Guard in the case. So if you were to, like, open this, as I open the box, you would see that, oh, actually, I have a sealed copy of broken. I have a sealed copy of Star Fox Guard in here, and then I have a sealed copy of Star Fox. <laughs> then I have a sealed copy of Star Fox Zero. I got this because I wanted the nice box. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have the paper boxes. Even like with games like Super Mario Maker, I don't have the box, but that box comes with the like booklet that shows you different stuff for Super Mario Maker. I only have the actual case. I've been able to buy the like Mario Maker like cardboard case a lot, but I just have not wanted to pick it up, because I'm like, I just want the game to play it. I don't want the game... I don't need a whole... Uh, I don't need, like, a whole box. So that's why I was, like, fine with GameStop cases until I have what's like, when I'm done, and I can just get those. Did you know Watch Dogs was released on the Wii U? 
it doesn't run very well, but you can still play it. We got We Party You, which is a game I bought accidentally like five times. And unfortunately, unlike Skylanders, I could sell this game back. I have this particular version because it came with the stand that the original game came with. It came with like a stand that you would put your Wii U on. As you can see, like the Wii U is like the Wii U gamepad is being elevated by something. And that is in this case. And I bought it and then I'm like, I bought this game already. And then I'm like, I already have this game. So I had to go sell it. Rayman Legends, one of the two Rayman games on the Wii U. We got the OG Pokemon Tournament, which was later released on the Switch as Pokemon Tournament DX. Everyone's favorite Sonic game, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. I put about five minutes into this game and I was like, this is really, really laggy because I was trying to play through all the Sonic games. It did not work out the way I thought it was going to. Uh, I thought it would be a lot more manageable, but I will, I will push myself through this one day because I want to. Sonic Lost World, Deadly Six Bonus Edition. Also have this on the PC because they released this game on the PC, unlike Sonic Boom, so you can get it on the PC and you can get it with mods and you can mod all the DLC content because obviously this was like when Sonic was like solely supposed to release on Nintendo consoles when they had that exclusivity deal and then obviously that exclusivity deal ended probably because of the train wreck that was this. It. Then of course we have a Walking Dead game, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct, which not a lot of people knew was actually released on the Wii U. There's a lot of random games that were released on the Wii U that you just wouldn't think about. Like this is definitely one of them. You wouldn't think like, wow, people that watch The Walking Dead love the Wii U, and now I'm pretty sure The Walking Dead is over. I haven't really paid that much attention to it. I don't know much about it other than I, I like the Telltale games. So this is the more expensive of the Cabela games on the Wii U. As you can see, I paid $95 for it. It's worth a little bit more than $95 now, but this is Cabela Big Game Pro Hunts, or Big Game Hunter Pro Hunts, which is just, it wasn't as wide released as the other one, so that is why it's a lot more. We got Jeopardy on the Wii U, which is actually not as fun as Wheel of Fortune on the Wii U, which is more fun if you're playing in a Twitch chat, because Wheel of Fortune is a lot more interactive than Jeopardy is. We got the Crudes Prehistoric Party, because this is when the first Crudes was released, and I think they're on the third Crudes, I, maybe the fourth Crudes, I don't remember. Two Adventure Time games were released for the Wii U. This is Finn and Jake Investigations, and then there is the other one, which we'll get to. This is Rodea Sky Soldier, which this game is actually pretty cool because obviously it comes with a manual, but it also comes with the Wii version and then the Wii U version, which you wouldn't initially think that they would want to release both, but they were like, you know, we'll do it on the Wii U because the Wii U can play both Wii and Wii U games. So why not give you the option to both? I don't think they run any differently. I've never tested the Wii version, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same game. It's just that you have two copies, one on the Wii and one on the Wii U. We have Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, I believe this is number one, which is based on the Cartoon Network show, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Of course, there was also number two, because the game was so popular, it needed a sequel. Now we have Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2, which is a sequel to the Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures game. I haven't really played either of these. I plan to. I plan to play all of these games at some point in my life. We have Paper Mario Color Splash, which a lot of people hated, and I think they all think the Origami Kingdom is better. I've never been a Paper Mario fan, I've never actually really been a Mario fan, and here I am with a whole freaking set of Nintendo games based on Mario. We have one of the 10 LEGO games released on the Wii U, LEGO Marvel Avengers. This was not the game that I had to buy multiple times. The only Phineas and Ferb game on the Wii U, Phineas um, and Ferb Quest for Cool Stuff, which I once made a review in which I mistakenly said that this game was not released on anything else, and then I learned that it was on the 3DS, the Xbox, the PlayStation 3, and the Wii U, and I felt really stupid. But I never took that review down. We have Planes, Fire and Rescue. This game took me forever to find. It was a pain to look for, and then I got a copy, and then the copy didn't work, because a lot of the Wii U discs suffer from this thing called dry rot. And so dry rot is when there's little peck holes in your discs so the discs just don't work, which is one of the common issues with the Wii U gate with the Wii U discs. So you gotta be really careful with how you treat the discs, because obviously you'll get these little pinholes, but there's not really anything you can do because they just rot away over time. And I had that issue with this game. So I bought this game. So I had to buy this game like three times to get a working copy. 
and I was really sad that the first copy didn't work. This copy I know works, I'm really happy with it, but I got the first one at a store and I'm like, shit, this game didn't work. But I think I also maybe bought it from a GameStop, and GameStop does not check their discs, which is just one of the worst things possible. And I try not to buy Wii U games from GameStop anymore, but most of the GameStops by me is not selling Wii U games, because obviously they weren't selling them at all. We got Batman Arkham Origins, you know, you gotta learn how Batman well, got to Arkham and then play the sequel Arkham City. You'll never play Arkham Asylum though, because that's not what you want. We got Amiibo Festival, which is Animal Crossing's party game, which I once played by myself for 40 minutes on a live stream, and it was one of the most bizarre times of my life. The other Adventure Time game, Explore the Dungeon Because I Don't Know, which is a dungeon crawler in which you go up a hundred different floors and you get to play as a bunch of different Adventure Time characters, but I like the Pirates of the Encaridian better, which is not on the Wii U. Then we got the best LEGO game ever, which is LEGO GTA, LEGO City Undercover, which, like I said, LEGO GTA, enough said, though the issue with this version is the load time's really bad, so it's recommended you play the Switch version instead. We got the Lego Movie game. We got Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Lego The Hobbit. Lego Dimensions, which I do want to play, but I can't play because I don't have the Lego Portal, like Skylanders, I don't have the Portal. And then Disney Infinity, I have the Portal for Disney Infinity 3, but I don't want to play that much. Lego Batman 2. This is one of the worst rated games of all time, and it's on the Wii U. 30 Great Games, Family Party, 30 Great Games, Obstacle Arcade. It is, like, one of the, and I mean the, worst rated games of all time. It's just not a fun party game. It's not a fun time. It doesn't work very well. It sucks. We got Hot Wheels, World's Best Driver, which I actually recently picked this copy up not too long ago because my other copy, I really just needed the case more so than I needed the actual game. Um, but sometimes stores won't sell you just cases, they'll sell you games, unless it's for a really, really cheap game. They are like, I can't sell you just the case, because then I have a loose game. And I'm like, that's fine. I understand. So I just pay for the case and end up with two copies of the game. Though that game I can obviously easily sell back. The Skylanders games I can't really do anything with. This is the Wii U game I played most recently, Rise of the Guardians. It reminded me a bit of Diablo. It wasn't bad. I know nothing about the movie, so my only experience with Rise of the Guardians is this game, and I still have no idea what's going on with it, other than I liked playing as the Easter Bunny Man. He was very strong. We got Disney Infinity 2.0. The OG Planes, that is not Fire and Rescue. The second most expensive game on the Wii U, Book of Unwritten Tales 2, which is a storybook game in which I think my friend Sega Blocks, he really likes this game. I still have yet to play it. I spent $250 on it, so I'm definitely going to be playing it. The other Monster High game on the Wii U, Monster High New Bruin School. We got the other Assassin's Creed, Floor, Black Flag. With uh, This is the GameStop edition, so it includes some bonus content. Game and Wario. And then Deus Ex, Human Revolution, Director's Cut, because Deus Ex is on the Wii U as well. There's just so many games on the Wii U. I mean, there's not a lot of games on the Wii U. There's 160 games on the Wii U. And then, of course, obviously some digital games, digital-only games, but soon those digital-only games will go away. And then you can sell your Wii U, you can sell your uh, digital-only Wii U for the, like, Wii U digital exclusives and charge an price for that. Don't actually do that, that would be really mean. We got Super Mario Maker, which works a lot better on the Wii U, in my opinion, than the Switch. Mario Maker 2, while fun, is just not at the same level as Mario Maker, because with the stylus and the gamepad and the second screen, it is just way more effective to do it that way than on the Switch. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, which was also released with Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS, and this game is fun. It's Smash. I think Ultimate's still better. Mario 3D World. This is the Nintendo Selects variant, though. 
not the regular variant. But the nice thing about this Nintendo Selects on the Wii U is instead of it coming on the side, like Player's Choice on the GameCube, it's only on the front, so it doesn't bleed over and make your spine yellow. This, on the other hand, is fun. This is Mario Kart 8. It's fun, uh, fun red packaging. This is also the best selling game on the Wii U, um, and it also is because a lot of the Wii U's came pre-installed with Mario Kart 8 on them. Like, so out of my three Wii U's, one of them is pre-installed with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, no, I was going to say Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 is pre-installed on one of the Wii U's because uh, that was one of the bundle packages they did. We got New Super Luigi U, which was for the Year of Luigi, as it says right here. It says 30, the 30th year. Yeah, 30, 30 years of Luigi. And this is what we got. We got New Super Luigi Bros U. We got this green case. And then, of course, a year later, they just released New Super Mario Bros. U again, but with the inclusion of New Super Luigi Bros. U. Because, you know, they just want you to have the same game three times. Or, in my case, four. Because I have two copies. One of these copies doesn't work. I do not remember which one. Because of the whole disc crop thing. Then we have Star Fox Guard. And Lego Jurassic World. <clears throat> Lego Marvel Super Heroes. This is one of those Wii U games that I had to buy multiple, and I mean multiple times. At least this one ended up being $6, but still. Like, I had to buy this game six times to get an actively working copy. Because every time I put one in my Wii U, one of, every time I put one in my Wii U, any of the three, it would tell me that it would give me an error. That was until I got this copy, and I had to check. So the way to check for the disc route, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to take a phone, put a phone flashlight on it, and then just like take it on the disc. Put obviously your phone on the side that has the decal on it, and then run it around. And then once you see once you see specs of light come through, you're like, oh, this disc is bad. This disc is not bad. Yeah. So and then we got Lego Batman three, the original Disney Infinity. Wheel of Fortune, one of my favorite games on the Wii U right now. This is my standalone copy of Guitar Hero Live. I do have the Guitar Hero Live guitar. It is currently in my closet over there, and I just do not want to go grab it. Got Gianna Sisters, Twisted Dreams Director's Cut, a platforming game on the Wii U, and one of those games that I've actually been like dying to play for a long time ever since I learned about it. got Just Dance 2017, my boxed copy of Shantae Half Genie Hero. This one, while in the box, is actually open. How to Train Your Dragon 2, because, you know, every single game with the 2 was released on the Wii U. You got How to Train Your Dragon 2, The Smurfs 2. Just Dance 2018, which was the only Just Dance game I've played on the Wii U, actually because I didn't want to have to play them all. We got Just Dance Kids 2014. We got Just Dance Disney Party 2. We got Just Dance 2016, which I believe this also has the Gold Edition. I know 2015 has the Gold Edition. We have Just Dance 2014. This game was a pain for me to find. Just Dance 2019. I walked into a store one day and I was like, oh my god, you have Just Dance 2019? And I had Just Dance 2019. I was down to like eight games left to finish the Wii U collection, and that is what I needed. And then we got Just Dance 2015, and this is another one of my sealed games. My last game on the Wii U is, of course, Disney Infinity 3.0, which this has Anakin and Ahsoka, because 3.0 was the Star Wars, 2.0 was, I believe, Marvel, and then 1.0 was based off of Toy Story. And then this is my copy of the Xenoblade Chronicles Cross Collector's Edition. And then, like I said, in here is my copy. Or, hello. Try to be very careful not to open this. In here is my copy of the Japanese version of Xenoblade Chronicles Cross, which I cannot play. And the sole reason I picked this up was because I thought it was one of those Wii U games that had a black spine and didn't catch the zero thing until after I got home. And was like, well, now I own a Japanese copy of Xenoblade. 
thinking it was the American copy. But I'm happy to own it. It's a fun game. It's one of those Xenoblade games that was never re-released on anything, so the only way to play it is on the Wii U. And I'm happy to own two copies, even though one I can't play, and one I can play. So. Uh, but yeah, that is the entire North American Wii U library, well, physical Wii U library. I do not have all of the digital games, and I do not want to get all the digital games. That is on me. But if you like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm Take the Retro Doc, and I hope to see you for more review reviews. Thank you.